Hey music friends, this is Davi Vask, I'm a music composer for games and today we have a request from Patreon and it's the final boss theme for Final Fantasy VIII, The Extreme. Uh, I've never played Final Fantasy VIII so I don't know anything about the context of this but let's listen to it, let's go! I'm expecting... Oh wow they're, they're playing around with the panoramic here, the sound keeps moving from left to right I'm expecting that very nostalgic PS1 orchestral sound, right? That we know from... Sounds pretty chill so far for a boss theme. Oh yeah, the PS1 strings, that, that's what I was talking about. Amazing harmony. Man, that's interesting. For a boss team. Ooh. There's a sensation of... Of despair, of sadness. Like, like I said, I've never played Final Fantasy VIII, so I don't know the context of this. But for a... For a final boss team to start like this, I feel like... The, the the situation, the conditions of the story of the game at this point are probably a, a, a condition of hopelessness, despair, because it feels very sad, it feels like defeat, it feels like there's no hope, so maybe uh, th this to me makes total sense for, for a, a, a final boss theme, right? You, you, you are in the climax of the story, it's all or nothing, there's a sensation of you know, are we gonna do it? Is, is the world doomed? So, also, at the beginning here, they we're doing something very interesting that I can't help but wonder if there's something to do with the story. They were playing with something called panoramic. In music production, there's something called panoramic. Uh, we often uh, call it pan for short, uh, which is uh, in, in the software that we use to make music. There's literally a setting, a little setting that you can drag with your mouse to choose from which speaker the sound is coming from. And it's a spectrum, you know, it, you can go all the way 100% to the right or 100% to the left and anything in between, you know, can go, you can go 20% to the right, 50% to the right or 100% to the left, 70% to the left. So that's what they're doing here with this sound, can you... Can you hear how the sound keeps traveling? Left, right, left, right. That's very interesting. And, and it's such an... an, an dysmorphic kind of sound it doesn't sound like any instrument it's just like some kind of sound effect i bet this this has something to do with the story maybe with the nature of of the boss what what maybe something that the boss does and the the choirs i just remembered this phrase in the choirs like I said, I've never played Final Fantasy VIII, but I remember this little phrase from the choirs from the intro of this game. Because I've also listened to the intro of this game, the intro cutscene of this game in this channel. And this little phrase in the choirs plays in the intro as well, so they're, they're making a, tro a throwback to the intro. It's probably a re recurring motif in the soundtrack, right?
interesting. Very still. The harmony is very still. There's a there's a stillness that feels kind of sad and apathetic. And the harmony is going to change. Here. Oh. Yeah, that's a very disturbing chord. So that's what I, what I was saying. Very, very disturbing chord here. This is not a heroic positive. Oh. Now it is, now it is, okay. Okay, so now we're fighting back. There's a storytelling going on. He's still the same from the beginning. Amazing, amazing melody. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, very, very interesting. He did the the melancholic, sad, kind of defeated intro. And then he transitions into like what what feels like a real boss theme. Now it feels like you're fighting. It feels like there's some excitement and heroism in it, and you're you're fighting back. What's interesting to note is that he did the the little uh, Final Fantasy battle theme motif here at the beginning. He does this uh, in pretty much all the the old old school Final Fantasies. And and when I say he, by the way, this is Nobu Ematsu, the legendary. Final Fantasy composer is one of the best composers alive today. So check this out. The little... This. Very simple motif, but this is a symbol of a Final Fantasy battle. He does this in, I want to say, almost all uh, regular Final Fantasy battle themes. It's interesting that he's doing this here in uh, a final boss theme as well, very cool. And the key is still the same as the, the sad part. Man, I, I love this PS1 sound. These PS1 strings. The harmony is pretty simple so far for, for the whole track so far. Drums. Okay. Now the harmony is moving a little more. Amazing, amazing harmony. Okay, so I want to show you guys something. The, the harmony gets really interesting in this particular part here. He starts doing something called modulations. Modulations mean that he is changing the key of the song. The key uh, is the group of notes that the composer is using at that point is the group of notes that the composer is working with so when you make a modulation you change the key it causes like a, a, a really cool effect of a shift in your mind because your brain even if you don't know music theory your brain is used to that certain pattern of notes to that key to that group of notes that the composer is using when that shift happens it, it takes like a second for your your brain to 
to know what's going on, to get used to the new group of notes. So it's a really cool sensation of a, a sudden changes, a sudden shift. And for a second, it feels like the, the floor was taken off from below your feet. It's very cool. Check this out, how he keeps changing the key uh, all the time here, uh, creating a, a sensation of, of instability and uh, unpredictability. Check this out. So it starts here in the original key. Check this out. Feel, feel the sensation of change. Here. Feels different. Again. cool right he changed the key three times in a row there and this is an interesting rhythm this is you know Nobu Ematsu sometimes he likes to use odd signatures in boss themes like five uh, beat measures or seven beat measures i'm expecting some weird time signatures here but so far it's been pretty pretty standard four beat measure like here for example he's still using a four beat measure but he's accentuating his he's putting emphasis on some weird beats that we usually don't expect so it sounds uh like a more complicated rhythm than it really is but it's still a, a, a simple four beat measure here here one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So he it's it, this is very odd. He's putting accents on the three, one, two, three, four, and then on the next bar, he's putting an accent on the four. One, two, three, four. So again, this is a, a way to make a pretty standard, pretty simple time signature feel more interesting. But again, I know. Nobu Ematsu is, of course, very skilled with odd time signatures, so I wonder if, if an odd time signature is going to show up here sometime. Oh, amazing, amazing melody. Oh, heroic chord. More positive. Ooh. He changed key again. Oh! Wait! Man, he threw me off again with the with the weird accents. I thought again that he had introduced some kind of different uh, beat measure, but it, it's just him doing weird stuff with the with the rhythm, with the percussion. Check this out. This is still a four beat measure. Check this out. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It sounds so weird. Can you hear the the hi-hat on the on the drums? He he put the hi-hat on the up tempo. We say up tempo because when we we count the beats like this, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. The up tempo is when your hand is up, and you know, it's kind of unusual to accent the, the up tempo. Uh, you usually expect the strong beat to be the down tempo. So the the hi hat on the up tempo here threw me off. Listen, listen how the hi hat is on the up tempo. It kind of it, it throws you off a little bit. Here, here, the 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 hi hat is not doing. Tss, 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 tss. It's doing. 
Very cool. But also, it's interesting that he is doing again, he's playing around again with the little uh, Final Fantasy battle motif. Check this out. He, he is including this motif again in this part. Can you hear it? Very cool, right? But also, there was another part here. That there was so much stuff going on. I, I couldn't, I couldn't bring myself to stop the song. There was some very cool harmony before here. He he introduced a bit of a heroic chord here in an unexpected way. He's doing a sequence here, a very predictable sequence, or at least he wants us to think it's predictable. He keeps going up like this. And he does this twice. At the second time he does this, at the end there, he bamboozles us and puts kind of an unexpected chord there that sounds a lot more heroic than we would expect. And he gives it such a, a cool, heroic, positive feeling. Check this out. So it, it ends in a sad chord again. This time will be different. We expect a sad chord, but... Listen how triumphant this, this chord sounded. Did you hear? It's so cool. It, it gives it a, an effect of... Because, you know, the first time it ended in a sad chord, and in, in the second time, he introduced the, this kind of su surprise positive happy chord so it feels like a battle you know that's going back and forth this track was suggested on patreon by yadenos hooray yadenos and hey this channel is all about sharing the music from the games that we love with each other so if you have a track in mind do like yadenos join patreon share a track with me in there so that i can share it with the world and remember whenever you're ready to spread your wings and go on a music journey again i'll see you there